Mojoholics, I'm your host Rebecca, and in this 10th installment of Watch Mojo FAQ, our CEO and co-founder Ashkan Karbis Frushin joins me to discuss why we took down our national anthems clip and then put it back up, and the Campus Ambassador Program. Hey Mojoholics, welcome to Watch Mojo FAQ episode 10. With me, as always, is Ash. This week, we're going to jump right in to discuss a content issue that popped up in the last couple of weeks. So, we published top 10 national anthems last week, but then on Saturday, we took it down. Did we offend somebody? Uh, yes, but not in the way we thought we would. So, basically, one of the entries was the um, German national anthem, which, whose lyrics were penned in the 1840s, but obviously, throughout World War II, the Nazis used components of that anthem for propaganda purposes and given their history, today, three out of the four verses are banned. Now, as we featured the anthem, we meshed the text with some audio of the whole original song uh, with video of former Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder. But when we kind of married it all together, we did feature uh, an excerpt of the unofficially banned, frowned upon version uh, of the anthem. Now, you know, we. We didn't obviously notice that when we produced it. That was not our intent. Um, as non-German speakers. As non-German speakers. And uh, when the clip went up, basically, um, we didn't get that many emails. We didn't get that many comments. We do scan the comments. But what happened is Saturday morning, picture this, I sat down with my coffee. Um, and instead of getting comments on the YouTube page or emails at our inbox, we got an email at Watch It Watch Mojo where one of our German viewers kind of said, you know what, I'm a big fan, but I'm rather offended that you guys featured this. And right away, like, my heart sank, and I was like, wait a second. So I went through the comments, and I kind of worked backwards, read the text, saw the video a few times, and actually sent it to a few German friends of mine to be like, what the hell do we do here? And yeah, basically, what may have been acceptable, and I'm stressing may, is if we would have kind of featured that one little line of the band portion, but kind of said, this has since been banned due to Nazi propaganda and... and what unfolded during World War II, or if we would have played other portions of the widely accepted and used legal version. Um, but the way it was kind of edited together, um, it, did, it, it would have been offensive to a lot of people, especially if you're a German viewer, you're proud to see your anthem featured, and then you sit down, you're like, um, watch Mondro, what the hell is this? So the second we found out where we actually got an inbound message and not posted on YouTube or somewhere, we took immediate action, so we never take clips down, but Saturday morning we took it down. Um, so why not just delete the clip kind of in secret, do it surreptitiously so nobody notices, put it back up? Why are we kind of casting a spotlight on it here? Because we're sadists. No, I mean, in all seriousness, we are very transparent. Um, we rarely make mistakes. If we make mistakes, it could be like, oh, we say something about an actress but may show B-roll of someone else and a lot of moving parts. And we kind of put an annotation, we put a comment self-deprecating usually and move on. But in this case, you know, what's that Michael Jordan line? I failed over and over and over, and that's why we succeed. That's kind of how I look at it. The only way you can avoid mistakes is if you just don't take, forget risk, if you just don't do anything, if you just sit there in like a vacuum in a, in a dark room. Um, so I think we are setting the, the standard and the best practices in publishing to you guys, you know, the generation of viewers who turn to YouTube and, you know, emerging platforms. Um, but we do, we cover a thousand topics across a hundred top ten lists, and that's a lot of content. So. You know, we, I kind of had a Roger Good, Goodell moment where I had to decide, like, do we kind of put our head in the sand and are like, too bad, it's banned in Germany, here it's not banned. And I didn't feel that was the way we operate, so we just took it down, and we didn't want to totally just ignore and move on. We want to explain that, yeah, there are a lot of moving parts with between the research and the text and the editing and the fact-checking and all that, and once in a while mistakes will happen, but this was a mistake of a different nature, so we did want to explain it. Yeah, and uh, just, I mean, we've discussed this before, but that's another reason why things take so long from going from the greenlit stage to the online stage, because there are a lot of moving parts, a lot of people that have to touch the video and make sure that everything is accurate. Yeah, and on that point, I don't think this is what happened here, but it's totally possible that there might have been a line in the script saying, but this excerpt has since been banned, and that may have been cut out, but we also didn't correspondingly cut out the B, uh, sorry, not the B-roll, but the audio. I don't think that's what happened here. I just think it was, you know, an eclipse kind of thing that it just slipped through the cracks. 
Right. Now, uh, I think you had mentioned something about wanting uh, like foreign viewers as insiders to prevent something like this. Yeah, that's it. So we have a lot of insiders and specialists who may be experts in a given sport or like in a given genre of movies, and we turn to them sometimes just as like a seventh and eighth layer of defense. But what this kind of made me realize is we do need to have regional and language experts as well, because this is the kind of thing that may occur. And when it occurs to a print publication or a TV publication, it is kind of forgotten. But online, um, you know, one of the great things is when these mistakes happen in our case, you guys are there to remind us and tell us loud and clear. So, you know, these mistakes are recognized right away and addressed, sometimes just with a correction, once in a blue moon with a whole takedown. And the clip will be edited and published later on today. Right. So uh, if you do want to be an insider for any purpose, let us know in, uh, in the comments or email us at watch at watchmojo.com. Uh, but anyway, last week, you talked about the uh, College Ambassador Program, Sue. What is the deal with that? Yeah, so we realized that part of the, uh, our demo, a lot of Mojoholics are in school, be it high school or college. Um, and many of you watch us through YouTube and found us through YouTube. But there's actually a whole other set of students that find out about Watch Mojo when their students, uh, when their teachers uh, use our videos as part of the curriculum. I'm not talking about like top 10 girl on girl kisses videos, but a lot of our like history videos, geography videos, science videos, uh, as well as pop culture that videos. That always blows my mind though. When people send us like a screen grab or something or a, a picture of their teacher showing a video That's in it. class, I'm like. Geez. That's it, and there's also <laughs> academic publishers like Pearson and whatnot that use our videos to augment their textbooks, bring them to life in the 21st century, so to speak, or teach foreigners how to speak English. Um, so, and a few years ago, we made our videos free for use in academic nonprofit ways in presentations and whatnot for students and, and teachers. So what we want to do is, yeah, without a doubt, is we want to get the Mojoholics to further evangelize and leverage our videos in the classroom. Right. But is there like a social component to it? Well, there's always a social component to it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's like you and Dan doing a tour of, I don't know, Florida State University or Arizona State University. But, but maybe that, that could be one thing. It's also just maybe like setting up like, you know, exclusive screenings at given schools where we have so much content, we could easily carve out a series and say, we're going to air this this weekend at a given campus and, you know, we'll be giving away Chromecast so you guys could watch. I don't know what that is. Chromecast is uh, YouTube's dongle, which is basically, I don't know what that yeah, is. But that's not what you think it is. It's basically just like a little widget gizmo you put in your big screen TV so you could project, you could cast your Netflix or YouTube um, onto your big screen. So, you know, the idea is we do want to start to tap into that community, not just online, but physical world. So we'll have to get you Secret Service as, you know, nice. security, <laughs> make sure nobody rushes the stage. But I remember going to see a Dignation event in uh, New York, and it was really cool to see the fans, you know, come out and watch the show. So we'll do something like that. Pretty cool. All right. So let us know in the comments what you think about that. Uh, yeah, no, I was just going to say, and the way down the field, I think we may eventually do even scholarships and things like that. So if there's like high school students that want to go study media, broadcasting, publishing, the internet, all that jazz, we just want to get you guys involved sooner than later. Very, That's it. Very cool. So send us your ideas. And yeah, just a programming note, we'll be switching the Watch Mojo FAQ to Thursdays. And that means when you notice that, that we will have, as you know now, we have three clips on weekdays and four on weekend days, which is insane. But when you, we're going to move it to... Thursdays, we'll then have four clips every day, which is insane. That's like, that's, all, that's almost 60 minutes of content each day. No wonder I'm so tired. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. That's all for this week. Tune in again next time and tell us what you think.